Azure Monitor. The agenda for our session today will be to cover quickly continuous integration and the value it provides, the session objectives for today, um, working with Azure DevOps and GitHub automation tools, how to collect artifacts from Azure DevOps and GitHub, how to react to change. We'll uh, kind of have a demo that I've pre-recorded. Maybe I'll be able to, to talk through that. Um, and I'm not sure if we're going to uh, be able to to open the mic up for Q&A, but if, if anyone can, you know, uh, type in any questions or is any questions I can um, address while, while we're working together, I'm happy to address those. Uh, so without further ado, let's begin. So continuous integration here. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a simple. This is a nice uh, image that I grabbed from a, a kind of a recent Gartner report uh, regarding just kind of the the five pillars that we have of of DevOps that were uh, most people would be familiar with. I would hope, you know, that from agile practices, continuous qu uh, quality, from uh, security, uh, compliance, governance, reliability, resilience, and platform engineering. Um, as we as we know, you know, the importance of DevOps has has has, has been well, you know well versed a lot of a, a lot of proponents for it have 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 come out and and really you know helped us see you know the 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 value of it the plan the process and the um, the people that go into devops i mean each year organizations they continue to realize the value and grow their their value of of devops uh, from continuous integration to uh, continuous monitoring quality um, making sure we implement a, a devops strategy um, is key to, as a uh, company, how we innovate, how we collaborate, and how we deliver value. Um, as part of this, and as kind of the nature of this, this session here, is that we want to look at how we can streamline these processes that we're using so we can constantly evaluate the tools to make sure that we are continuously delivering value uh, to our customers. With that said, the session objectives we have for today will be to understand automation offerings from both Azure DevOps and GitHub. We're gonna learn how we can consolidate and collect artifacts and data points. We'll look to analyze and detect trends and anomalies from our automation offerings. And finally, some techniques to stay proactive and agile utilizing proven practices. So a little, a little bit about me. My name is Ali Yousefi. I am a senior uh, customer engineer for Microsoft. I work in the Power Platform and Dynamics 365 space. Uh, current certifications include Azure DevOps Engineering, Dynamics 365 Pl Power Platform Architect, and Azure Solution Architect. I'm a uh, certified trainer and hold MCSEs in both cloud platform and business applications. Um, so I'm not sure how much experience everyone on the, the, the call has with Azure DevOps, but I thought it would be helpful to kind of step back and just get a, a better understanding of the, the terminology that we'll be working with uh, during this session today. So Azure DevOps has something uh, called pipelines that include um, builds and agents and so on. So a, a pipeline will run on a agent. You ask, what, what, what would an agent be? Well, an agent could be a, a potential, a Microsoft provided uh, container, could be a self-hosted or a company hosted virtual machine workstation, um, could even be a, um, say a Docker container that's, that that's, that's could be leveraged with um, say Kubernetes or, or such. Um, so Microsoft provides um, the Microsoft hosted uh, um, agents which have uh, certain tooling inside of it and so on that allow us to to quickly you know uh, you know work with with um, kind of industry standard uh, services that are available as well as kind of build our own and, and and leverage some of the you know Microsoft stack as well as the the open source stack um, when we are looking to to work with these agents we want to uh, provide something called a a build definition a build definition simply means, we are going to um, design a, a, a workflow, if you will, that encompasses what we would call a build. Well, what goes in a build? A build has jobs. Jobs are many different types of jobs, and jobs can actually run on separate types of containers. So a, a certain job could maybe run on a Windows container. A job could run on a, a Linux container or even a Mac OS container. So jobs can, 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 uh, can uh, encapsulate different tasks. Well, a task would be something maybe like a, a, um, 
a script, like think of a PowerShell script, maybe a, a service, maybe a uh, something off, offered for Microsoft. So for instance, if we are talking about Power Platform, we have the Power Platform build tools from the, the Microsoft product group. Uh, we have other uh, third party and community offerings as well that we can leverage here. They represent the foundation of what, a, uh, of what we do in a pipeline. Um, as you see in the red box, we have artifacts. So artifacts could be things from um, packaged consumables. So you may have uh, maybe solution files, maybe you have um, assemblies, maybe you have uh, even source code that may need to be you know, delivered. So for instance, I may need to push data to, a, or excuse me, source to a Azure function. I may need to uh, create a solution package that can be imported into uh, Power Platform environments. So we have artifacts that are encompassed within the build. Those artifacts could also represent um, continuous quality artifacts, so things like code analysis, test, um, code coverage, et cetera. And so each one of these, um, <clears throat> each one of these items we have in here kind of help is all tied to a, a build. So, but for this particular session, we we are interested in not only the the, the build, but we want to get to the low level to better understand how we can optimize these builds. So for us, we want to focus on these these yellow boxes, the tasks. So what does a task have? Well, a task has the the logs. It has the status. Did it succeed? Did it fail? It has the timeline. How long did it you know take to run? And then, you know, of course, like I said, the logs, which can have the verbose logging to tell us, hey, the, what's, going in, what's going on inside of this task? What's the instrumentation that's happening? And as you can see here, we also have things like um, timeline. And these all represent, I've highlighted these in bold, all of these represent um, particular API calls that we can use to help kind of, um, kind of grab this information from all of our historical and running builds to kind of understand more about you know how 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 they've ran in the past what they're trending and how they're looking now including again task uh, info timings log pass statuses etc so that's kind of azure devops in a nutshell for github a little bit different a little bit different here uh because it has um different APIs that allow us to, to, to run uh, uh, check suites and so on. So the core of a GitHub action is a workflow, which is you know, very similar to a, to a build. Um, inside of that, we have the different runs that can happen off of this, this workflow. So the workflow would be um, a YAML file that instructs the agent. Remember, we have the Windows agent, Linux agent, et cetera, to perform these particular steps. Um, inside of the workflow, can we can have jobs that can run on the different agents? Uh, act, the action run, the workflow action run, will be the 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 run from that particular uh, YAML file that can be kicked off from a manually from a workflow dispatch. Can be uh, kicked off from a pull request, for instance, if we want to try to do a um, a merge of a pull request, or maybe we have a push of um, of a commit. We can do something like that. Um, when we have an action run, there is a check suite that's associated with that. That check suite will represent the kind of a, think of like um, quality that would be within our, our, our workflow action run. So, you know, being able to run, uh, you know, code quality, so running code analysis and so on would be inside of the check suite. Well, check suites will encompass many runs. So a check run is kind of the, the, the core of, um, of what we have for this action run. Uh, the reason I'm calling all this out is simply because when we get to the um, the webhooks, you'll see you know what is actually going to be delivered from from GitHub, and I'll, I'll explain that in detail when we get a little further. But I want you to understand specifically in this case that a action run um, ID is is relatively static and can be can be rerun multiple times. Um, and it's tied to a, um, the check suite is tied to uh, your particular commit. Um, and so when you have your commit, you can then rerun your, your, your um, action and, and you know, update things and, and understand more about that. Um, so check suite and check run will be kind of the crux of what we're going to be using when we want to extend and learn more about our particular GitHub actions. The reason we're calling this out now is because, you know, looking ahead, we're we're going to be working with the various APIs and SDKs that each one of these these uh, offerings that um, we'll be working with have. And so that said, let's go ahead and get into collecting artifacts. We have 
three three major areas integrating collecting and storing the artifacts for integrating for azure devops uh, what's what's nice about both of these well this is they have an azure logic app con uh, connector for devops uh, we we have quite a few options here in terms of triggers and actions for triggers we can trigger off of a build when it's completed regardless if it completed successfully or completed with failure um, if it maybe got um, um, canceled or any kind of maybe some human intervention here or maybe if it's it got queued but it's sitting in a, uh, a long line of queues and we need to figure out how to prioritize or triage that particular build um, so the logic app or power automate connector provides us you know some robust um, um, statuses and objects that we can trigger off of um, we have a build events webhook so we have the webhook provides us the complete flexibility uh, flexibility we need um, to work with with the actual um, events themselves if we want to say tie into an azure function or in our case azure automation we can use webhooks to uh, notify us with microsoft teams or um, an office 365 a notification or an Outlook email or even a, a, a third party um, piece like Slack or, or, or something like that, right? Um, Azure DevOps does have a very, very robust uh, REST API with different API versions. I highly recommend uh, familiarizing yourself uh, with that. Within that RESTful API, you can do things um, such as review your environments, your deployment jobs, your approvals. Um, you know how long approvals are um, have been sitting in the queue waiting for waiting for people uh, to to approve or reject. Uh, you can again look at previous builds, actually look at trends between builds as well, like the diffs between commits. Um, understand you can run a search and see how many um, how many commits have been have been committed on a particular file, how many changes have been committed on a particular file. Um, and Azure DevOps also includes a SDK, a .NET SDK. Uh, that can be used within Azure Functions or your app service or even uh, an on-premise application you have. For GitHub, we do have a Logic App and Power Automate connector, mainly tied to, um, to, to, to issues and comments, more of the collaboration experience with, with GitHub. Uh, so, in this, so for GitHub specifically, we're going to be looking at more using the Action Run webhook and RESTful API. The Action Run webhook for GitHub um, allows us to set up uh, webhook events and so webhooks will um, will essentially act as a, a notification to external uh, systems so in our case we're going to register to look for um, action runs completed or something that's close enough for an action run to complete so we can collect the artifacts for it github rest api also includes you know um, lots of flexibility to be able to to, to rerun to to get artifacts to look at commits and etc um, what's neat about GitHub is that we do have a PowerShell module that is all open source that allows us to, to work with the, the RESTful API. You'll notice one of the main differences between these two is that one has an SDK, uh, where one also has a PowerShell module. All right, so collecting artifacts, this is where it gets kind of fun because we can look at you know, leveraging low code or pro code. And I know we have some sessions coming up in the the, uh, the Global Automation Bootcamp that will cover uh, Power Automate Logic App. And what's neat about the connectors I mentioned is they they quickly allow you to, to work with both GitHub and, and DevOps. Um, so you can quickly build with the UI, you have the connectors for both. I mean, you even have the connector for uh, the next piece where we're gonna store data for log analytics. And again, you know, test and deploy right from your browser. Um, some of the, the, the benefits of that are the, the, the quickly, the building and deploying, but some of the cons are that these, these connectors are, are, think of kind of wrappers around an, a, an API, providing you kind of an SDK over an API. Well, some of those, those connectors don't necessarily expose all of the potential um, methods or usage of an API. So if you get into a spot where you may hit a cliff, that's where we can go in the no cliff approach and go to the pro code or again, we can quickly deploy with all the you know tools that we have at our disposal, Vis Visual Studio Code, um, um, Azure uh, Portal allows you to, to commit directly through, um, through the portal. Um, <clears throat> you can, you get the flexibility of being able to work with the API and that could be through, you know, using PowerShell like we'll see in GitHub or using um, the RESTful API we, 
example that we use for um, Azure DevOps. Um, you have uh, logic app integration. So what's nice about the function in Azure Automation is if you still like the low code approach, but you hit that cliff, you can uh, simply create your Azure function or, or Azure Automation run uh, book and invoke those via your, um, your logic app or Power Automate flow. Uh, what's nice about the uh, function in Azure Automation is that you can very easily um, commit to both Azure Application Insights and or Azure Log Analytics. Um, the key here is that with Power Automate and Logic Apps, currently there is not a Application Insights um, collector connection, connector at least, so you have to build a, a custom one. With um, Azure Automation and Azure Functions, we can leverage the, um, the assemblies that we have for Application Insights to leverage the SDK. Also, one final, final point, but very big point, is hybrid workloads. With Azure Automation, we can uh, work with um, our our servers and such that are on premise. So if we need to maybe start looking at how to run um, self-hosted runners or 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 quickly take a, a a build and modify it to to work with um, with with our services that we have in house, we can do that easily with Azure Automation. Finally, to actually store the data we'll be working with, we have two major offerings for from the uh, for Microsoft Azure, including Azure Application Insights and Azure Log Analytics. Uh, for the people who are have used this, you've probably seen uh, some of the the newer uh, kind of features of Application Insights, including being able to either migrate existing ones to Log Analytics workspaces or kick them off from uh, Log Analytics workspaces. So I get this question a lot from some of my um, my customers, which are, why, why, why would I choose one or the other? Well, Log Analytics is fully customizable. You get a workspace by default. You can essentially ingest anything. It works very well with, with custom uh, JSON objects. You can extend it as, as needed. Application Insights, a little bit more constrictive in terms of the tables that you have, but once you begin using it and seeing how everything can relate to each other, it's very powerful. Um, also has a very useful tooling for analysis, such as um, per performance and failures and different ways of, of, of understanding anomalies. It has smart detection. It can understand if there's a, a rise, a trend in failing request and notify you or, and take action. Um, and again, it, you can enrich data points very easily uh, by adding sessionable contextual information. And just to kind of recap what we saw earlier, we have uh, the builds, jobs, tasks, and workflows. I want you to think about how you could possibly uh, break these down into relatable uh, tables. Think of a relationship model and how these could be broken maybe into individual um, events or records within a table and how you could correlate them. Uh, the reason I put this one on here is because going forward as part of my demo, you'll see me uh, kind of look at both of these these different workloads from Azure um, and GitHub um, and try to look at them from a distributed transaction model so that we look at how we, you know, how we work with an API. When we work with an API, what do we do? We, we invoke an API and we get a response. We don't know what happens in the black box, if you will, but the black box may have all these extra um, calls and, 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 and uh, services it has to render and do work to provide us that response that we need. So in our case, we're we're going to follow a similar approach where our build will be our essentially our our request to the API, and the jobs and tasks and so forth can be the dependencies on that, and that will help us kind of create a relationship model uh, so we can quickly identify a build or workflow that may be failing or may be trending in the wrong direction. Moving forward. We are looking at next how we can react to change. Uh, three buckets again, analyze, visualize, uh, respond, and inform. But before we get to that, I thought it'd be fun to talk about a, 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 a scenario that's actually came up to me recently. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of think about some of the technology we've already talked about and how to apply it to a real world scenario. So in this case, we have a scenario here where we have Azure DevOps pipelines running successfully. That's great. But our business is expecting a faster turnaround for hot fixes and deployments. So we need to be able to quickly analyze our build task, uh, the trends in those, and look for optimization. However, due to budget and resource constraints, 
we, we, we can't necessarily spend a bunch of time developing and testing a particular solution. We need something we can quickly uh, deploy and start collecting the metrics so we can better understand where we can tune these, these processes we're using. So we require something that's not only effective, but cost efficient. So in this case, I think it'd be in my, what I think we would try to first do is, is start looking at a low code approach. So that would help us stay, um, you know, cost efficient in terms of development hours and development costs, as well as being able to, to, to quickly deploy. So in this case, I went with an Azure Logic app. Remember, Azure Logic apps allow us to, to, to be triggered off of a complete of a DevOps pipeline build. You know, that can be a successful one, a failed one, it can be anything, but it will uh, fire off that and provide us uh, some contextual information about the build. So in this case, I'm going to fire on the, the complete of a Azure uh, DevOps pipeline build. I can then use the Azure DevOps connector, which has a REST API action. And this, this one is, is, is awesome, <laughs> to say the least, because it's highly, highly flexible. If you find yourself in a spot where maybe you, you've been using the actions and they've been working very well for you, but for some reason there's probably an action that that um, you need that's not there. By looking at the documentation on the, the REST API, you can leverage a connect, connector action called the REST action that allows you to essentially add a, a URL fragment to the end of um, your connector to, to really get whatever or post whatever you'd like. And so in this case, the build timeline we need that's part of the REST API is not something that's native to the connector. But using the action, we can now retrieve our timeline, which means we can see how long a job took, how long each individual task uh, spent, how long the duration was for each task. So now we've collected that information. We can then use the log, uh, log analytics connector to quickly take that, that, that JSON response and simply send it over. So now we have a custom table that now contains all of our uh, DevOps uh, pipeline build task timeline information within there uh, you know as part of this piece here you could also collect logs and so on uh, but but in each one of these you could send to a different table and, and correlate them with with the IDs for the build and finally we've we've studied we've we've understood where we could potentially optimize our pipeline so now we have updated the pipeline definition remember we're using YAML and now we are able to uh, to now optimize our build task and we could simply have this running and this will always, you know, collect us data, which we can then, you know, um, analyze and, and critique. All right, so analyze, visualize and respond. So I've chosen four main areas here that I think will work out uh, for Azure Monitor, uh, BI, Data Lake, and then actually taking some action here, which I'll get into that in a second. But first, let's talk about uh, analyzing the data we get. Once we've stored it within Application Insights or Log Analytics, the beauty of those two log solutions is that we now have an API that we can quickly uh, use to, to, to build robust dashboards, charts, slicers, matrices, and so on that can be then embedded in, in Power Apps portals, can be uh, viewed on your mobile device, can be you know, used almost anywhere. Um, so we can visualize our Azure Monitor data, specifically our Azure DevOps build pipelines, our GitHub workflow actions. So we can start building line charts and scatter plots and really start, you know, kind of building these, these dashboards that are going to be helpful for, um, for the analysts to be able to, to understand where we may be, um, you know, regressing or we may have some uh, place for tuning our, our automation. And again, you can embed those in apps and sites. Uh, something we actually use here at, at Microsoft in support is we use um, Azure Data Explorer. It works with, with big data, right? Can handle from multiple sources. Think about all the different services and, and products that we support. They all have their own telemetry that they provide. Well, the beauty of Azure Data Explorer is that we can build these what's called Custo clusters uh, that can provide real-time analysis from these different multiple sources and they can be transformed and loaded into the particular models that we want. They allow us to explore data effectively and efficiently. Um, and you can you know, scan millions of records in, in literally uh, seconds. 
So very, very, very good uh, couple options here. One for more visualization and one for more uh, core, you know, core query. The beauty of it is that Microsoft Power BI can take a Custo query and can consume it and will uh, allow you to, to kind of create the charts and dashboards you want, which will be part of the demo a little bit later. And learning, next part. So learning, what's neat about this is now once we have all of our logs in a centralized area, we can then do things such as uh, spin up alerts. So alerts can tell us when there may be issues with maybe the, de the DevOps service itself, when there may be um, some, some issue with some of the services or quote unquote the dependencies we're using as part of our task. Um, we can then leverage smart detection to see if there's any sort of trends. Um, and we have the proactive uh, monitoring piece as well where we can spin up alerts uh, to to notify us, you know, can uh, can notify teams, channels, DLs, or can actually take actions, which we'll show in the demo. But that can be things such as kick off webhooks, logic apps, even Azure automation and Azure function. Um, we can also take our our log analytics um, and uh, funnel that to Azure Data Lake, and that's where we can, you know, really shine with the data scientists. We can ingest raw data and build, you know, build AI and learning off of off of our trends. So we can, you know, look at how, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions, if we want, of of, of logs and artifacts, and really understand, you know, where this could be, you know, um, where we could tune and optimize. <clears throat> For respond and inform, again, we have the alert actions we talked about before. Uh, you can spin those up to, 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 again, alert you. Also here, we have Azure Sentinel. And when you start working with log analytics, you start getting into the space of, of Azure Sentinel, which can you know, start looking for anomalies, threat detection, et cetera, and kind of be that kind of first layer of defense to make sure there, you know, may, maybe there's maybe somehow a pipeline or workflow action is, is you know, providing credentials or doing something that we, we, we may not you know, want. And so Azure Sentinel allows us to be able to audit and quickly take action on our, our pipelines as well. To inform uh, you know, Microsoft Teams, really great. Uh, there's actually a bot for both uh, for Azure DevOps and GitHub. The bot works very well with, um, with, with Teams and channels within Teams uh, to allow you to do things to have approvals and let you know when builds are completed and failed and, and, and so on you know, using action cards. Azure communication services are key here. We can quickly send SMS. Uh, we can have phone calls. We can chat with bots, et cetera, uh, using the Azure communication service uh, channels to inform our key stakeholders and you know, make sure we enhance all the channels that we do use for informing um, our team members. Finally, for act and deploy, again, the neat part about DevOps build and GitHub actions is they have APIs and SDKs that allow us to you know, not only read but to invoke and to tell these things, hey, we want to queue a, you know, queue a build. We want to requeue this build, but maybe under these different circumstances. So, for instance, if we're working with Power Platform and maybe we're doing something like importing a solution, maybe we, you know, something happened where we introduced a unmanaged layer and we need to be able to to roll back and put in the managed layer. We can requeue and change our variables and so on. You know, you can quickly update YAML using the API. Uh, you can deploy agents. So for instance, I do a lot of uh, UI test automation. Some of the parts here is that you may run into um, misaligned dependencies on the Microsoft agent. For instance, you know, when you're working with UI, you're working with uh, browser drivers like Chrome driver, there could be mismatched dependencies there. You may need, you may need to have particular extensions uh, installed on um, browsers. So for instance, you may want to run it on a, self-hosted runner you may want to deploy out to a to a kind of a, a pool of of self-hosted servers maybe they run under they have different um, conditions they run under maybe they you know so they're testing uh, how you know your end users may interact with the platform so you can quickly do that with the azure devops builds um, api and sdk github actions quickly rerun actions. What's neat about it is it provides you APIs to rerun, to cancel, to do all of these things. Um, you can also update the workflow definition just like the YAML. And again, you can deploy agents in a very similar uh, mechanism as uh, the DevOps um, API. So one more scenario before we get into the, um, before we get into the demo here. So I thought this was kind of funny. Um, 
So I wanted to do a GitHub one this time. So in this case, our deployments, we're using GitHub action runs are failing and they're failing due to miss dependencies that are required for us to, to, to run our, our, our run. <clears throat> so we're running our GitHub actions in a GitHub hosted runner to save maintenance and operational cost here. So we don't necessarily want to have to, to, to pay for, um, to pay or to have like pay the the overhead to have to maintain and patch servers or in this case so we want to run the github hosted uh, runners similar to the microsoft hosted runners um, so we need to get notified um, as well as have a deployment rerun immediately as soon as it, it fails uh, to better you know to, to quickly react but we also need to be uh, notified and uh, be able to capture the the logs and artifacts so that we can understand what what's going on here so the analyst team has requested that we ensure that we track the trends of our uh, check suites and external traffic. One thing that they're interested in is that GitHub, in this case, we have a uh, we have a public uh, released um, um, service that we have. Maybe you, you've written your own um, your 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 own GitHub action um, task, or you have your own you know service that you're that you're promoting. Uh, you want to be able to track the trends and see where you know people are are, are stargazing or people are are downloading your um, your releases and so on here. So in this case, we're going to go a little bit deeper and a little bit more on the pro pro code side. So in this case, one thing that that um, I called out a little bit earlier is that with GitHub, the currently as it stands, it's currently is that the GitHub connector itself is is kind of limited to the collaboration experience. So things like working on issues, um, commenting on 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 PRs and this kind of thing that it it triggers very well there. But for triggers such as completing of, of check suites, check runs, workflow dispatches, etc., um, not so much. So in this case, we're going to actually leverage. Um, Azure Automation, which has webhook capabilities to allow us to kick off a runbook um, based on certain events within GitHub. So in this case, we're going to register a a um, webhook on complete of a check suite. So why not a check run, which happens you know multiple times within a check suite? Well, a check run can can actually complete, and a check suite can still be can still be um, can still be running, and if the check run is not um, is 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 complete, but the check suite's still running, we we we're gonna have um, potentially not being able to collect all of the artifacts we need. Um, what I've also found uh, through pretty vigorous testing is that ultimately uh, the a way to get to the actual run is through the the check suite. The check run a little tricky to get to the check suite can be done. Um, I do find the check run a little bit more chattier than the check suite. So we go with the check suite. It seems to work very well and gets me each individual run. So in this case, um, after the testing I've done, I would highly recommend the complete of the check suite. So in this case, we're kicking off a uh, webhook that is attached to an Azure automation uh, runbook. We're going to use something called the PowerShell for GitHub module, which I'll demo a little later. Um, and this module is a wrapper over the GitHub API. So it allows us to quickly um, authenticate with a with a personal access token or PAT, um, we, and then we can send all these subsequent requests back and forth to it. Uh, so we'll use that module to collect data. We can quickly use that module to also um, to rerun a failed uh, build. So we'll rerun the request, which will kick off again for um, for GitHub to rerun. Which again, then would again fire this off and so on here. Uh, so maybe build in some checks here uh, to ensure that you're you know not just getting into a continuous loop. Also, because our analyst team has required us to track trends, we're going to use Azure um, Automation to send events to Application Insights, and this will be fun because this is a uh, it's not necessarily native to to Azure Automation, which tends to is is has a native integration with log analytics. But in our case, we're going to we're going to play with uh, App Insights and kind of kind of see how we can make that work. Um, once we send it to App Insights again, we can use Azure Monitor to alert stakeholders and we'll do a demo of that now. Uh, so I went ahead and uh, pre recorded myself with the demo. I'm going to see if the audio will work. Um, if it works, I'll just go on mute and let it play. If it doesn't, I'll just uh, talk through this. So let's let's see how it works.
Hi there, Ali. Um, there's no sound. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, there let you go. Me, let me let me see what I can do by pausing it. Sorry about that. That's better. Oh, we've lost you again, Ali. Can you can you hear it now? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me. I'm I'm playing it. Can you hear? Can you hear it talking? So I'm talking right now. I don't know if you could hear it on the recording. If not, I can quickly talk through it. Yeah, we can't hear the recording. Okay. Uh, we can okay. only hear, yep. hear your voice now. Yeah. Sure. So in this one here, uh, what we're doing is I'm getting the PowerShell for GitHub module. Um, and I'm, I showed how we can include it from the module gallery. Um, well, all we're really doing here is we're deserializing that webhook data that you had seen earlier from Studio Code. I'm setting who the, the owner is, which is me, and then the repo name here. This get automation variable is very key to Azure um, automation. It allows us to store you know, variables, obviously, outside of the runbook. Um, but what's, what's really neat about it is that it can be secure string, use Azure default. So even as a, um, say as a administrator, I won't have access uh, to it. So this GitHub, um, see here, even if I open this up, it'll be empty. I won't ever be able to see it. So that's it's it's a great way of encrypting uh, variables. Similar if you use um, like add steps. So I'm just going to take that encrypted variable and create a uh, an authentication header here. You can see. Um, what I'm highlighting here is this is the application insights assembly. Um, Azure Automation out of the box does not include that integration with Application Insights. So in this uh, sample, we're actually going to show how you can take a zip file, or excuse me, a DLL that's in a zip file, and import that into your Azure Automation kind of area. So in this case, I needed Application Insights. It could be any dependency. I had to zip it up, and then I actually would import it into Azure Automation. Um, so I'm going to show that here in a second. Um, and so we're about to put this into, um, again, we're going to put this in as a, as a DLL, but we're going to focus on this C colon module to user. If you ever store a, uh, Store a module here. You add a module. That's where it's going to put it. That's key. That was a that was a trick to find that key piece. That's not really documented anywhere. So this piece right here. So keep that in mind. So you'll you'll have your DLL, which will be in a folder, Microsoft Application Insights. You'll have your DLL here. Just this part static. And when you're do, doing it locally, just point to a local version of the DLL. So it might be, you know, like a folder or something like. That. Once you have that, you can leverage this object. So it's taking the object in the assembly and then being able to use it. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting all of the runs for this particular uh, repo. I'm going to find the one that's related to my check suite. Remember, our we can't necessarily do a uh, a webhook to our hunt, so we have to rely on the check suite to check run. So with the check suite, it's it's kind of tied uh, what we want to a workflow run. So we're going to take the check suite on that and we're going to get run our workflow run object and we're going to move on to track github action run and github uh, action run here will get me my workflow run uh, just to make sure we have everything we need this might this might be off here um, we're going to get the workflow run and this invoke the hs method is from the powershell for github model It'll provide a single record back. There's also one for bringing back a list of records. Um, and inside here, now we're going to look at the jobs. Um, so a, a, uh, a workflow can have multiple jobs. So in this case, each job is going to have is going to be its own request because the job has different steps. My steps are going to be um, 
are going to be considered dependencies of uh, so a, a job member could be Linux or Windows, and every step inside, you know, could maybe work with Linux and not with Windows, vice versa. So we want to kind of keep that that correlation there. And App Insights works well with the dependency um, exceptions, etc. Um, so what I'm showing here is how you can essentially build out dependency objects uh, and build out a, um, a a custom dimensions bag that will include other uh, data points that we can then kind of tie together. So in my case. Taking the run ID, the job ID, and other ID uh, URLs and so on that I'll use. So now I'm in Application Insights. In Application Insights here, I'm going to uh, run a query for dependencies where the timestamp, meaning anything that's that's newer than three days ago, that's what this is. And I can see these are all of my um, GitHub uh, workflow actions that have to take a look at. The workflow called import and publish file. Two jobs export from dev and run quality check. One's fail, one is successful. So we go in the felt one and see this who am I. So this is one using the Power Platform tools uh, from the product group in the who am I failed, probably a credential issue there. Um, we can go and see these are the steps set up, uh, run action, so I export solution, upload the artifact, and then clean it all up. Now when we go back to App Insights, I can now see steps. Yeah, so you can see types. We have type two checkpoints and in tasks and phases and so on. Like this here, this one I'm showing you is a mix of both DevOps and GitHub. So in this case, this Power Platform export solution is you can see the URL here is actually as DevOps. But with this here, I can say, you know, what was the order it went in? What was the duration? What's the log URL? You know, rerun URL. Um, who's the provider? Maybe I'm using a, a community built first party tool. I could see the job name, the run ID, job ID, and all of these. The custom dimensions is a, the uh, JSON serialized. Um, and you can uh, extract it using the, I think it's expand or JSON or parse or JSON method, which will allow you to then um, query each one of the objects within. So maybe you say, I want to find which one is a uh, job ID, X, Y, Z, or one. Now we're creating an alert rule. So there's a button that I click called New Alert Rule. It'll quickly let us take a query that we built um, and create a, uh, a custom log, which we can then say, do we want it based off a number or aggregate of result set? And we can say how fast we want it to run. In this case, we're going to have it run every 10 minutes. That's often it's going to run. There, you can create an action group. Action groups can help notify, or they can, you know, actually take action. So, for instance, in this case here, I'm going to demo how I can take action by spinning a, or sending a webhook back to another Azure automation um, runbook, or Azure automation uh, webhook, etc. So, see. Uh, runbook function, logic apps, webhook, secure webhooks. Um, and when you click on this, it'll put up a URL over here. And when you have the URL, what's neat about GitHub specifically is that it has a rerun URL that it provides you. So if it fails, you have you have immediate access to the rerun URL. You could you know cut out the middleman if you will with Azure Automation and simply re you know rerun it instead of having to go back and reloading. So it's it's pretty it's pretty neat what you can do here. Um, again, the end. What's cool about the webhooks? You can use Power Automate. So there's options. Finally, we're going to export and hit export to BI, which will which will download a uh, text file, which will show you how to take this query and pump it into a Power dashboard. In this case, this is the output you see over here. I have my dependency, and I have it has the duration. Very rudimentary here, but this is just kind of showing you what you can. Each one of these artifacts provides you know, get the link that you have, you know, you have automation script. Let's say Power BI. Take this and build off of it. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna show like I can click over here. This is a slicer, so I can choose the different um, 
the different uh, uh, jobs that I have or builds that I have. And that's the beauty of doing a request and dependency type thing is now I can have kind of the parent child. So I can say, for instance, I'm, you know, export from, you know, Dynamics Org, unpacking a solution and committing it to source. I can see that and see all of the different steps that happened. I, you know, I, I can see the public installer, uh, installer. I exported a solution, unpacked solution. I can now see full installer to 24,323 milliseconds. Maybe there's room for optimization here by caching tools or using a self-hosted runner that already has the uh, solution package driven and whatever. Um, so this is nice because I can kind of see where these are going and where they're trending and you know which ones are kind of the bigger vendor of, of, of I mean, down. You can timestamp it and integrations as well. So that's pretty much, I think, the end of uh, end of this uh, one here. I'm just kind of going here. Here, of course, we have the wonderful uh, uh, community um, power platform uh, tools as well. The MSCRM ones. It's very nice. Um, yeah. So we're just collecting and showing how these. In this case, I have role name. I'm adding. This is contextual. So you'd like to enrich data. You know, am I running it on a self-hosted or Microsoft-hosted agent? You know, what operating system am I running? Um, you know, what version of the operating system or what tools am I running? Am I running Windows Studio 2019 or 17 or Windows 10 or and so on? So that's the end of that that demo. Let's continue on so we can have some time for Q&A. So I hope with the session takeaways that we now, you know, have emphasized uh, how continuous quality is uh, across organizations and how we can understand trends and quickly act and how that's paramount to success. You know, how these continuous integration artifacts and logs, uh, how they can come in all shapes and sizes and the need to unify them grow along with organizations. An example would be if I worked for an organization um, that maybe had acquired a, um, a previous um, uh, company that used GitHub, how do I, you know, you know, still use their 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 continuous integration alongside my Azure DevOps or vice versa. Or maybe I need to migrate from Azure DevOps to GitHub workflows and still keep kind of the the trends and stuff that I was having. This 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 here <clears throat> will provide us an ample opportunity to do that. Um, we review the approaches presented to analyze performance and how we could optimize efficiency. Um, I want you to be able to examine collaboration techniques. So, tech, you know, using the webhooks, what's neat about them is that we can use, you know, even third-party connectors as long as Microsoft connectors, but we can use um, connectors for first-party like Teams, third-party for Slack, and, and so on. We can even create work items back into, um, you know, DevOps or, or other work item tracking uh, um, systems that we use. Finally, um, we can deploy at scale. And this one is, is important because, you know, with this here, with monitoring and the ability to quickly um, act and kick off another webhook, we can, we can spin up. I didn't get a chance to show this one, but we can uh, actually take the agent. Imagine taking the, the, the agent that we need to run our pipelines, to, uh, having a Azure Container Registry or Docker Container Registry that <clears throat> has our different images quickly spin those up with you know kubernetes or however we want to orchestrate that have those as our agents to be able to 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 run our um, pipelines in parallel i say this uh, you know because again with my background with test automation i've seen organizations that have thousands and thousands of tests that can take days to run and how do we find ways to paralyze this to to quickly find you know where we may be failing so we can you know speed up our deployments because that's kind of the you know one of the, the the name of the game really is like quickly being able to deploy um so yeah so i hope all of that uh was helpful for some references here's the links for github powershell for github uh, github rest api devops rest api.net sdk um, i'll provide some of my references here my youtube channel with some videos on various topics uh, github account uh, which has some tools that i've that I've built to help automate the Power Platform um, Admin Center. The, I'll have the the um, the repo for this here with all the stuff I showed on the demo here as well. Um, my monitoring Power Platform series on the uh, the the CE or um, PFE blog. Um, here's the Easy Repro blog if you're if you're using that tool, and then my LinkedIn for contact information. I'm not sure if you how you guys are doing for the references or with the slide deck. I'm happy to to provide this slide deck. Um, as well, I can put it in my repo. I can um, 
you know, however you guys like to do it, I can take these references and put them in the chat. Uh, this is pretty much the end, end of it. I'd like to leave any time we have left for any Q&A, um, anything that I covered. If you'd like me to share my screen and talk through anything in particular, I'm happy to do that now. Thank you once again, Ali. And, and look, you've covered a lot there. You have. And uh, I think the main contention point, I think uh, most of the attendees, um, including myself, will have is Azure DevOps versus GitHub, right? So I know there's no competition, um, but usually an organization opts for one or the other. What is what is the what is your recommended approach to that? <clears throat> if I if I were complete greenfield, I would I would uh, adopt um, GitHub. I think that there's there's massive investment in the GitHub platform. I I see I I, I see it being sort of the 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 the, the future of of DevOps. Um, I think it's proven. I think it's been around for for many years. Has you know millions of repos and has very robust community. I I would recommend um, GitHub. Now I will say in terms of parity, I think DevOps still has still in terms of the kind of the the the, the pipelines and some of the things you can do. I think still has and honestly some of the 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 marketplace is 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 very robust with um, Azure DevOps. But I would recommend if you're evaluating both. Well, at least some of the things you can do to help kind of uh, secure yourself from technical debt is to start leveraging YAML for your uh, pipelines, which I'm pretty sure most people are doing, and start looking for um, uh, potential uh, you know marketplace tools and such that that would can, that would work well with both uh, Windows and, and 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 Linux containers. What if you if one thing I will say that's very helpful is that if you look at the documentation for GitHub um, runners, the GitHub hosted runners are the same runners that that um, Azure DevOps uses. So if I were to say, take my, you know, easy repro, um, you know, build definition and take it over to GitHub. Now I'd have to modify the YAML slightly because of the, there's some, there's, it's not like a complete um, uh, shift to, to GitHub there. But in terms of the tooling, if I was using a certain version of Google Chrome 88 or, or Microsoft Edge or what have you, the tooling would, would be the same. And what's actually kind of neat is that you can connect uh, both with webhooks, I could have source in GitHub run in DevOps. I can have source and DevOps go to GitHub if I need a little bit of, you know, maybe I need something that's here and not there and so on. One thing that just came out recently um, that I that I, I think is that I've wanted for a while in GitHub is the uh, concept of environments. So that's that's there. Um, and I think that's that's a very important one. There's a there's actually a um, GitHub uh, repo that you can follow along on on an issue. I think it's an issue, but it talks about it has it's their roadmap, and so you can subscribe to that. I would highly recommend if you're useful, if you're familiar with GitHub, finding that roadmap um, and subscribing to it, and you'll get email notifications when there's an update to what you know what features are coming on the roadmap. Thanks, for that, Ali. Um, so, um, so cert certain organisations will uh, lean, obviously, automatically towards Git, GitHub, whereas um, with um, you know with more of the kind of um, you know um, one organisations that are very aligned to the Microsoft Slack will obviously be be with 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 Azure DevOps. Now, I think my next question um, is 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 related to um, easy repro adoption um, because we see that. There still is some challenges. Um, what, what we've seen on the ground uh, in relation to easy repro as an open source um, toolkit for um, for power platform test automation, and uh, I wanted to get your thoughts because the testing community um, haven't really adopted it as well as they should have and i just wanted to get your opinion as as to why that may be because um th there have been some challenges on, on on adoption for easy repro totally fair question um <clears throat> part of the challenges i would think because right now as it stands is it's it's based off of uh like dot net framework and not exactly the newest one it's ba um it's it, 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 it's, it's a very good question. I'm trying to, you know, think of it as, you know, being a, a Microsoft representative here. <laughs> One of the benefits of it is that it is, it is, a, a, it is um, supported by, by the product group through the, through the issues and the mi milestone deliveries and, and so on. So we do have that. 
Um, what I would say about it that I, I would take away if you're if you're evaluating different UI uh, um, testing technologies is one thing I think it does very well is it sets up a, a very strong architectural foundation of how to work with um, especially if you're a Selenium tester, how to work with the browser drivers um, and how to work with, you know, interacting with the, the Dynamics 365 or Power Apps, model-driven apps um, um, UI. So at a minimum, I would say look at that. In terms of adoption, I can say the, 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 the organizations that I work with, which are, you know, some of the, the biggest ones, they, we, we, we have got them working with it, some, some more than others. Um, I'd say some of the challenges I think are honestly a lot of the, 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 the bigger organizations have already had some tooling that they've invested in. So they're kind of staying with that and they're looking at easy repro is like, what can I, you know, learn from it? So, you know, going, if you, if you're looking at it from that angle, if you're in that kind of place, I would say, you know, look at the source, look at how the, the, the X path is designed and how it interacts with it to understand the, you know, the, the, the right way. Cause I've seen some really great tools from the community that, you know, are leveraging some of the newest tech, like, you know, using playwright or using puppeteer or using, you know, want to build more towards a full stack type developer. And they're, and they, and they all, they all work really well. And I think in terms of tooling, that's, it's great to be flexible. Just think about when you're building these things, how to, you know, how to, build that foundation so that you're designing things that you could quickly, um, you know, shift your UI, your UI from your, you know, browser and the act, the piece that actually interacts with the, with the drivers. So for instance, how easy repro was able to quickly shift from the legacy uh, user interface to the, uh, to the unified interface by simply having that, that decoupleization between the browser and the UI, how the X path is working and how, um, specifically um, how we're interacting with the browser as a user would be. So, you know, trying to limit how much, you know, JavaScript you're submitting to the browser and so on. Because as a, you know, end user, I'm not going to be doing that kind of stuff, right? I'm going to go in, open a browser, click on things, you know, and do work like I normally would. So it just depends on what kind of testing you're doing. But a lot of the, 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 customers that I work with, they, they, what they like about easy repro is that it simulates the user activity has the performance center, uh, metric piece already built in. So by, uh, including the application insights key, you can already get those performance metrics that are similar to what you see now on the monitoring tool. Thank you once again, Ali, for that, um, really, really valuable. Um, and, uh, yeah, we would love to get you on at some point again in the future. Um, but any last words for the community? Okay, so that's that was Ali Yusufi, um, and um, that was a great demo for those who are not already using Git, GitHub, um, and um, uh, Azure monitoring. Uh, that was a great use case. Uh, I know um, for Power Platform, uh, we, we don't really get that level of telemetry, and uh, it would be good to start implementing that level. Now, I've kept the next gentleman waiting for far too long. Uh, Mike, Mike, are you there? Yes, I am. Ah, Mike. Yeah. Hi, so last yeah. but not least, but we do have yeah. Mike, and he's got a great session on PowerShell uh, and Azure. Um, so, Mike, I know it's that you're the last session of the day, um, but I know a lot of people are hanging on to to hear from you. Um, so, without further ado, if you could share your screen, that would be great. Yeah, I will. Get it started. So, so Mike, where are you dialing in from today? From the Netherlands. From the Netherlands, so it's uh, very late in the Netherlands now, isn't it? Yeah, it's, no, 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 yeah. very yeah, ten o'clock. Yeah, ten o'clock. Well, well, thanks again, and and uh, without further ado, over to you, Mike. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, okay, hello guys, thank you for joining the session. Um, I will 